What not to do when you come to Thailand? It becomes your problem. Scenario number one is between less than a dollar. You're an expert. You know how much it costs. Scenario number two. They are there to make money. They are there to sell some booty. Bar managers are not your friends. Avoid conflict. Basically, this guy got hit on the head with a dumbbell. Good morning. It is Saturday. It is around maybe, maybe 1130. You know what we gotta do first? Well, first thing I do nowadays is feed the dogs. For some reason, they're not eating. I'm not sure why, which is kind of strange because Lucy, our new puppy, it seems like she wants to eat all day long. I don't know, it's kind of it's kind of weird. Hopefully she's not sick. But anyways, my name is Alex, Alex Bam Bam. Some people know me by Jiu Jitsu Passport. And today's topic, what not to do when you come to Thailand. So one of the most common questions I've been asked since I started making YouTube videos, it is my first time coming to Thailand. What advice can you give me? That question is a little bit hard to kind of answer because when people ask that, they want something specific to them. It's a little bit hard to, you know, to answer because everybody's different. Everybody likes different things. So today I'm going to give you a general answer that can be personal as well. This applies to pretty much anybody that's going to be traveling to Thailand. So basically avoid conflict, any kind of conflict, verbal, physical, just avoid conflict, not just fighting, but arguments. Don't go to somebody's house and start trouble. Even though sometimes you don't start the trouble, it becomes your trouble. It becomes your problem. And let me explain a little bit more. I'm going to give you some scenarios which I've seen them happen in real life where people have gotten into a lot of trouble because they just couldn't walk away. They did not want to avoid conflict because it was about the principle. They felt that they were done wrong at the moment. And instead of them being, you know what, you got it. I'm going to go right. You can go left. My bad, even though it might not have been your bad. Scenario number one. In Thailand and in the Philippines, public transportation, when it comes down to taxis, they use scooters, they use motorbikes. In Thailand, you're gonna jump on the back of a motorbike. That's how you're gonna get to your destination. In the Philippines, they have a scooter or a motorbike and they attach a little cart next to it, making it a tricycle. You sit in the tricycle, and the driver is gonna take you to whatever you gotta go. Quick piece of advice. Before you use one of those, either a motorbike or a trike, always ask how much it's gonna cost you to get to wherever you gotta go. On average, it's between less than a dollar to maybe $4 to get to whatever you gotta go using either a trike or a motorbike. If you live here or if you have come here a hundred times, always ask. Don't assume because you're taking the same route a hundred times and it costs you two dollars. The hundred and one time is going to cost you two dollars. You're an expert. You know how much it costs to travel from point A to point B. You've done it a hundred times. So you don't need to ask. You're just going to get on and they're going to take you there. And when you get there, they're going to tell you, sir, it's $20. Most of the time, it's not like that. Most of the time, it's they double charge you. So let's say it's $2. They're going to hit you upside the head with $4, right? Because you didn't ask. Not all the time, but it does happen. Instead of you saying, oh, I know how much this costs. You're ripping me off. You know, this is only $2. I'm not going to pay $4. And you start arguing with the driver. And next thing you know, either you're getting your ass kicked by him and his friends, or the police is involved, or you got your arm broken, or your leg broken, which I've seen it happen. 
seen it happen to a friend of mine. He said uh, one of the bike taxi guys attacked him last the night and that he went out drinking because he called us. He basically called us one morning and said he had, he had broken his leg and he needed to go to the hospital and he was here in Thailand and which hospital did we, do we recommend for him to go, you know, to get his leg fixed. And then he's, and we asked him, I said, so how, how you broken your leg? What, what happened? And he says some taxi driver, motorbike taxi driver attacked him for no reason. He whooped his ass and he broke his leg and, and he, you know, now he has to go to the hospital. And we were like, that don't sound right. And I'm gonna tell you why they don't sound right. I'm not saying all, all these guys that are motorbike, you know, taxi drivers are honest and, and good people. I'm not saying that. But what I can tell you is this, random attacks on foreigners do not happen often. Now, if you find yourself in a bad part of town, you're gonna get your ass whooped. You're gonna randomly get your ass whooped. <laughs> but in tourist areas, not the bad areas of a city, random attacks don't happen often here in Thailand. It's not a thing. Nobody's gonna, you're not gonna be walking down the street and all of a sudden, they're just gonna whoop your ass. It doesn't happen. You know, that it's just, it's not common. Right away, we were like, nah, I think this guy probably was overcharged. He got into a little dispute with the, with the taxi driver and then, you know, he got his leg broken. So don't let your ego get your ass whooped. Don't let your ego end up taking you to the hospital. Don't let your pride get in the way. Take the L, pay the money, go home without a broken leg. Scenario number two. This is something that I have also seen myself. So you find yourself in a bar, you see a girl you like, you bought her some drinks. In Thailand and the Philippines, there's a thing called a bar fight, where you pay the bar and you can get a girl out of the bar to go outside and, you know, go enjoy some clapping. <laughs> Somewhere, you know, that is, well, that is the purpose. It's called the bar fine, because you're paying a fine to the bar to get the girl out, right? To spend the night with you, or maybe to spend a couple hours with you. Don't get it twisted. Even if you have been here to Thailand or you've been to the Philippines, these girls are called bar girls. They are there to make money. They are there to sell some booty. It is what it is, right? I'm not saying go to the bar and start calling this girl's press. I'm not saying that. I'm just saying that's what they do. The bar managers, they're pimps, right? I mean, that's what they, they're pimps. Let's, keep, let's be honest, right? They're not your friends, right? That's another topic for another day. Bar managers are not your friends. They are there selling booty. <laughs> not their booty, but the girl's booties, their girls. In any other part of the world, what do you call that relationship, that dynamic. Now, I'm not saying go to a bar and start calling girls prostitutes. Don't get my words mixed up, okay? I'm just telling you what it is. Be respectful, okay? I'm just gonna say that, because a lot of y'all, this is why I'm making this video, no offense. <laughs> but, again, going back to the bar. You meet a girl, you pay the bar fine, you leave, you get to, you get to your hotel room, or maybe before that, you go to another, some other bars, you're having fun with her, you're drinking, you're partying, you go to the nightclub, you're dancing, you know, you're doing your thing with her, right? Okay, so now it's time to go back to the hotel. You go back to the hotel and you get to the hotel, you got this beautiful lady in your room and this lady tells you, no booty for you, sir. I don't wanna do anything. What do you do? You got two options. Option one, you said, not a problem. Very nice to meet you. Have a good night. Let her go. Take a shower. Go to sleep. Option number two. Go back to the bar. Go back to, to talk to her pimp, to the bar manager. And explain to him what happened. Hey, listen. I was suspecting some booty. I didn't get no booty. A lot of times, the manager is going to give you your money back. So the bar manager might say, here's half of your money, sir. Or the manager said, there's no refunds. You got one option. Not a problem. Leave the bar, go back to your hotel, take a shower, go to sleep. Do not 
get into a conflict. Do not start arguing with the bar manager. Do not start arguing with the girl in the room, making a scene, causing trouble. Avoid conflict. 99% of the time, it's gonna end up really bad for you. Story time. I'm gonna tell you what happened personally, not to me, but to a friend of mine. I was in the Philippines a long time ago, maybe maybe 20 years ago. I'm in my room, dead asleep. I'm, you know, I'm out and I hear a banging on my door, loud, loud banging. I open the door and there's a girl shaking, shaking, she's shaking, like she's petrified, she's scared. I did not notice it was no tears, right? But I didn't say nothing. I said, oh, you okay? And I noticed it was the same girl that a friend of mine had bar find the, that night. I don't know, it was, it was like four or five in the morning at this time, right? But it was the same girl my friend got from one of the bars. And then she goes, your friend is crazy. He's trying to kill me. I go to my friend's room, I knock on the door, he opened the door and I looked, the room was a mess. You know, like the bed was messed up. So I, I asked him, I said, yo, uh, I, go, I, I went in the room because I didn't want to talk to him outside. So I go in the room and I ask him what had happened. And he told me the girl didn't want to, you know, they didn't want to give up the booty. <laughs> so he got upset. He got into an argument. I don't know what happened. I don't know if he hit her. I don't know if uh, she's making it up. Cause she didn't really say that he hit her. She was just saying that he wanted to kill her. I asked him what happened and he said uh, he, she went crazy. So she's blaming him, he's blaming her. I did ask him, I said, what happened when she, she did not want to sleep with you? And then he told me, I told her to give me my money back. I said, I want my money back. This is not fair. He shouldn't have done that. He should have been like, hey, go home, you know, take the L or go back to the bar. Avoid conflict, but he didn't. The shit hit the fan, the police showed up. If I remember correctly, I know it was over a thousand dollars, 1,100, I don't know, but it was, it was over a thousand dollars that he had to pay for this mess to go away. He ended up losing way more that he could have lost just by letting her go home instead of saying, you know, I want my money back and you know, this is not fair. If you find yourself in a bad situation, always stop it or don't let it escalate. Cut it off at the lowest level possible. Let's take it to the bar, because a lot of you guys, when you when you guys come here, you know, you like to drink, you like to go out to the bars, you know. If you live here, it's a little bit different. You don't really, that bar scene for most of us is kind of like, eh. <laughs> you know, it's, it's not attractive anymore. But a lot of you all come here, you go to the bars, you go to a nightclub, you know, you're looking for some booty. <laughs> If you find yourself in a bad situation, let's say uh, you walk in a bar, every bar has security. Every bar has either somebody's family member as a security guard, guard in the front door, or a security guard from a company. Regardless if it is a pimp's uh, cousin that is guarding the door or is from a legit security uh, company, it doesn't matter. You walk in a bar, and the security guard is kind of rude to you, treats you like whatever, right? Or makes comments. Keep walking. Don't look back. Don't give him a mean look. Don't don't answer back. Let people talk. And I don't care if you know how to fight. I don't care if you think you know how to fight. I don't care if you, you have a black belt. I don't care if you're six five. Don't say nothing to the security guard. Don't say nothing to nobody. Just keep walking. Let's say you you messed up and you say something to the security guard, and the security guard turns to you and says, what do you say to me? And then things start to get heated. You know, he says something to you, you say something to him. Try to say, oh, I'm sorry. I apologize right away, let it go. But let's say you start to argue and here comes a bar manager, his, he is in the middle, and you and the security guard are arguing and you saying you're right, you're a paying customer that you should not be treated like this. Now the manager is involved. Stop the conflict at the lowest level possible. It went past the first level, which is security guard. Now we are at the second level, the bar manager. Something should snap on your head and be like, you know what, this is getting, a, this is escalating. Anyways, talk to the manager and be like, you know what, I messed up. It was my mistake. How can we fix this? Let me buy you a drink. Let me buy a girl a drink, give the security guard a little, a little tip, which is not much, 
three or five dollars, you know, that you're gonna give them. You don't wanna give three or five dollars, again, it can become a thousand dollars, like it happened to my friend. If you're arguing with the manager now, then somebody's gonna get involved, the police is gonna get involved. Now you're gonna end up going to the, to the police station. You're not back at home. Always stop the conflict at the lowest level possible or avoid conflict, period. And me telling you to avoid conflict, it is not about you versus the locals. I'm telling you to avoid conflict even with other foreigners because there are some crazy people out there, both locals and foreigners. A few months ago, there was an incident at a gym here in Pattaya, which it went viral. Basically, this guy got hit on the head with a dumbbell, which is horrible. I feel super bad for the guy. But at the same time, I honestly think that could have been avoided. If you look at the video, basically what happened was this. The guy's at the gym and he's using a bench. Another foreigner came to him and he's like, hey, this is my bench. I'm using this bench. I guess this guy didn't like that. He's like, nah, this is my bench. I'm, I'm keeping it or I'm using it. You gotta wait. Well, I don't know exactly what happened. They exchanged words and the guy that was claiming that was his bench, you, even in the video, you can see he's very aggressive. Just his demeanor, his, the way he's standing, the way he's talking to him. If somebody's aggressive to you and they're not touching you, they're calling you names or they just asking you, they're telling you, hey man, that's, you know, that's my chair. Say, oh yeah, that's your chair. Here you go. Have a good day. I'm out. That's it. I'm not talking about your home. I'm talking about a bar, a restaurant, whatever the case might be. Somebody's aggressive to you. They're demanding that, it's, that something is there that is not your property. Then it's, your property is a little bit different. We can talk about that on another video. But if they're demanding something that is not your property, you got it, man. It's all yours, right? So anyway, so this guy came up to this other dude and he's like, that's my bench. The other guy didn't want to give up the bench. So the aggressive guy walked away. The guy that did not want to give up his bench lay down on the bench, hands occupied with two dumbbells, laying down on the bench. He made himself an easy target. If somebody's aggressive to you, you don't have to fight him. You can walk away. Just leave the place. If you're in a bar, somebody's aggressive, pay the bill, get out of there. Again, avoid conflict. But this guy did not avoid conflict. This guy exchange words with this dude and then after somebody's aggressive to him he lays down on the bench with his hands occupied that to me that didn't make any sense so this other guy you can see him coming back in the video with a dumbbell in his hand and he just smashed this dude's head and messed him up this guy i feel so bad for this guy don't again don't get me wrong i feel super bad for this guy because his face got fucked up he had to go to the hospital pay a whole bunch of money to get it to get his face fixed. Hopefully this guy came out of it. Okay, nothing bad happened. But again, all he had to say was either, I'm sorry, I didn't know you were using this bench. It's all yours. Or be like, oh yeah, yeah, whatever. Just give up the bench. Avoid conflict. <laughs> I mean, that's, so, that's as, as simple as that. Anyway, so, so yeah. What advice can I give somebody that's coming to Thailand for the first time? Number one, avoid conflict. Again, it's kind of hard to give specific advice, personalized advice to a question like that, right? If you want some one-on-one -on -one with me, or if you want to kind of advice that is for you, specifically for you, send me an email and then we can talk offline and can set up a time and we can have a one-on-one -on -one and I can, I can answer some of your questions. But it's very simple, guys. Avoid any kind of conflict with local folks, foreigners, girls, animals, <laughs> just anybody. If they're not touching you, if they're not taking your property, walk away. With that being said, thank you for watching. If you like what you see, please subscribe, like, dislike, do whatever you wanna do. Until next time. We are out.